Acrotrupus ligamon, sacrospinus ligamon, and this muscle. What's the name of this muscle? Ischiococcygeus. So the coccygeus or ischiococcygeus superficial to this muscle, I am able to show you sacrospinus and sacrospinus superficial to sacrospinus, the sacrospinus is visible. The anapoxygeal ligament is visible here, the pinal body, the position is here. You should know exactly in failure to pelvic diaphragm, I told you the pelvic diaphragm is such as a semi opening of the bridge. In failure to the pelvic diaphragm, which structure is here? Clean. Remember the diamond shape, posteriorly anal triangle, anteriorly urogenital triangle, okay? In urogenital triangle, not in the anal triangle. In the urogenital triangle, you can find another. In the urogenital triangle, you can find another diaphragm. This diaphragm is only in anterior triangle, urogenital triangle. What's the name of this diaphragm? We call urogenital diaphragm. So pelvic diaphragm, urogenital diaphragm. Urogenital diaphragm only is visible anteriorly. Posteriorly, we are not able to show you urogenital diaphragm. Can you imagine? In this picture, we remove the urogenital diaphragm. Look at here, it is the urogenital diaphragm. And we remove, we cut and remove the urogenital diaphragm. In this picture, you are going to look at, again, to inferior surface of the diaphragm. The head of the baby is going to make some tone, some injury for the pelvic diaphragm, for the urogenital diaphragm. So to be able to decrease this injury, we do the episiotomy. We do the episiotomy. In this picture, this picture is going to help to you to be able to imagine the position of the outlet of the pelvic cavity. I told you it is diamond shape. It is the posterior triangle or anal triangle and here is the anterior triangle or urogenital triangle. In urogenital triangle, if you look at to the urogenital triangle, means the anterior triangle, all of the structure in the male sex and female sex are different. But the anal triangle, all of the features, all of the structure are the same. Now, here, you are going to look at the urogenital triangle in the female sex. In the, prenate, in the female sex, we are going to speak about all of this structure. Look at to the anterior triangle or urogenital triangle in the female sex. Compared to this picture, it is anterior triangle or urogenital triangle in the male sex. All of the structure are different. This is the bulb of the penis. This is the bulb of the penis. Exactly posterior to bulb of the penis and anterior to the anal canal, we are able to find, to show you the cranial body. Exactly posterior to the vagina and anterior to anal canal, we are able to find and show you the cranial body. So cranial body in both sex is anterior to anal canal in female sex, posterior to the vagina, in the male sex, posterior to both of the hands. Here, you are going to look at the preternal arm. You read about the preternal arm. Around the heart, we have the common shape, fibrocerus that we call pericard. Around the lungs, we have serous, that we call the left. Inside of the abdomen, we have a serous sheet that we call the preconome. Such as the pericard, such as the pleura, the preconome consists of two layers, parietal and visceral. If you 
imagine here is the abdominal cavity, the wallpaper of this room we have, which we can own pericardifer. And all of the structures, such as this table, this chair, everything inside of this cavity are imagined, or the organ inside of the pelvic, inside of the abdominal cavity. Each structure has a covering sheet of this prism. Some of the structure, such as the, for example, jejunum and ileum, completely covered by the preconome, completely covered by the preconome. Some of the structure, such as the contrast, such as the this structure, the preconome only passes through the anterior. We can hear the posterior surface is not going to cover by the preconome. Only anteriorly, this structure, the preconome is passing. So we call the position of this structure is retro preconomal. But some of the structures, such as the jejunum and ileum, this preconome completely cover the jejunum and ileum and making a mesenter that we call mesenter, meso for the jejunum and ileum. And around this meso, the jejunum and ileum are able to move, going left side, going right side. So inside of the abdomen, some of the structure, the position is retrogrinconal, some of them are intergrinconal. If I change the picture and look up to this picture, it is a sagittal section of a female organ inside of the pelvic cavity. In the female, you are able to find here the pelvic diaphragm, the urinary bladder and urethra, uterus and vagina, rectum and anal canal. Look up to the preconome. Preconome is not able to cover completely the urinary bladder. Only the superior surface of the urinary bladder is going to cover by the preconome. What about the rectum? Only superior and anterior surface of the rectum is going to cover by the preconome. This preconome very soon reflected to the posterior, superior surface of the vagina go to cover the posterior surface of the uterus. Anteriorly, only the body of the uterus is going to cover. If we imagine, here is the cervix, the neck of the uterus, posteriorly of the neck, posterior of the cervix of the uterus, covered by the preconome, but anteriorly, the cervix of the uterus never covered by the because this preconome very soon reflected over the superior surface of the urinary bladder. So in the female sex, this reflection of the preconome making to pouch, to preconal pouch. What's the name of this pouch? You know. Recto uterine pouch. What's the another name? Douglas pouch. Yes? You read about the Douglas pouch. Douglas pouch is the reflection of the preconome. Another name of the Douglas pouch we call recto uterine pouch. The reflection of the preconome from the anterior surface of the rectum over the uterus making a pouch, a preconal pouch. What's the name of this pouch? Recto uterine pouch. You know the Coulomb sigmoid and the terminal end of the ileum are going to occupy this Douglas pouch. If you stand in correct position inside of the preconal cavity, if extra flows such as the pus, such as the blood accumulate, according to the gravity it is coming down and accumulate inside of the Douglas pouch. Okay? So in the female sex, two preconal pouch is going to be formed inside of the pelvic cavity. One of the pouch is here, between the urinary bladder and uterus. What's the name of this preconal pouch? Vesico-uterine pouch. What's the name of this 
print on our board. Retro-Euterin. Retro-Euterin, Vesico-Euterin. What's the another name of the retro-Euterin? Douglas. Douglas. This is important. Douglas? Now, Douglas. look at here. The vagina is visible here. Uterus is visible here. If you imagine, here is the urinary bladder, and here is the red cone, uh, excuse me, the uterus. The vagina is here, and here is the red cone. The retronome is going to cover anterior surface of the red cone and reflected to superior and posterior surface of the vagina. Go and cover the posterior surface of the uterus, anterior surface of the uterus, and here, reflected to superior surface of the urinary black. Two preconal pools is going to form here. One of them is in the rectum and uterus, we call rectal uterine or Douglas. One of them is in the urinary bladder and uterus. What's the name of this push? This preconal push is very small. Normally, none of the organs are going to find here. But this preconal push is larger, bigger. Normally, the pronostic moving. The inner own terminal are coming here. If you have the cutoff of the female sex to be able to show you this bone in the cervicality, I should bring out the pulmonic sigmoid and terminal coil of the inner own inside of this coat to be able to show you this space. Now, according to the gravity, if the in pathological time, if the blood come here or a pus come here, they are coming down and accommodate here. In female sex, you don't need to do a surgery to remove this extra fluid here. In pathological time, if here an accumulation of the liquid you have, in female sex, you can go to the vagina making a Here, penetrate here, and this pus or this blood is coming out from the vagina. Okay? This relation of the posterior and superior surface of the vagina with the preterm help to the doctor in the female sex to be able, if in pathological time, we have accumulation of the liquid here, we penetrate here and bring all this extra flow from the last coach. So in the healthy cavity, in the female sex, how many critical coach we can show you? Two. Two critical coach. One of them is in the rectum and the uterus, <coughs> we call blood loss coach or rectal enteral, and one of them between the urinary bladder and the uterus. Now, if I change, and go and show you the pelvic cavity in the male sex, means this picture, in the male sex, the organ is the urinary bladder, exactly in very urinary bladder in the male sex, the prostate gland is visible, the urethra, posterior to the urinary bladder and the prostate, I am able to show you rectum and anal canal. The reflection of the preconome from the anterior surface of the rectum to the superior surface of the urinary bladder in the male sex, making for us only one preconal push. What's the name of this push? Rectum vesical push. Rectum vesical push. How many preconal push in female sex? Two. Two. How many retinal push in the main one, sex? One. one. Recto vesical push in the main sex. Now, we come to this picture. It is lithotomy position. 
anal triangle and phenol triangle, the position of the phenol body. If we, the name of two monsters that has attachment to the phenol body in both sex. Levator prostate, pubo vaginalis. Please be careful in your exam. It is possible, I ask you, in the stem of the question, all of the following muscles in female sex attached to penal body. So if I ask you the water prostate, you know the water prostate never belong to the female sex. But it is possible, I ask you, all of the following muscles has attachment to clean all body except I'm not going to ask you if female or male sex so you can think about both of the sex okay so please read the stem of the question I'm going to ask you about both sex I'm going to ask you about the female sex or I'm going to about the male sex now here in the female sex posterior to the bull of the penis and hello to the pineal body, this is the position of the pineal body. And hello to anal canal, you are able to find the pineal body. In the female sex, posterior to the vagina and hello to the anal canal is the position of the pineal body. Later, I am going to introduce to you some of the muscles that attach in the female sex and some of the muscles that attach in the male sex. About the artery that comes inside of the pelvic cavity. What's the name of this artery? Abdominal artery. What's the name of this vein? It is the largest vein in our body. If I ask you the position of the vein of cava inferior compared to the abdominal aorta, which of them is the left side? The aorta. Which of them is the right side? Vena cava inferior. The abdominal aorta is continuation from the thoracic aorta after passing through the diaphragm. Inside of the abdomen, if I remove the preconal arm, means all of these vessels the position is retroperitoneal. Mm -hmm. All of these vessels, the position is retroperitoneal. Mm -hmm. The abdominal aorta is coming down at the level of the fourth lower vertebra. At the level of the L4, fourth lower vertebra, the abdominal aorta divides to two terminal branches. Left common area, right common area. Which of the Left. Left because yeah. the uh, yeah. vena cave is right. on the right. Which of them is longer? Left. Right. 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 Because it's uh, right. 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 Are you talking about the, the abdominal aorta is coming down right. and the level of L4 divides to the right common right. area and the right area. Right. Because the abdominal aorta is near inside of the abdomen to the left side. So the right common is right. Okay? The left common is short. Each of them go and enter to the half of the pelvic cavity. Left and right side. If you look at the abdominal aorta, some of the branch are tails, some of them are single. Give me the name of the single branch. The first one, you know, celiac trunk. Celiac trunk. Another celiac trunk. Inferior mesentery. Give me the name of this artery. They are the pain. Don't die. Uh, don't don't die. Die. The renal artery. Inferior phrenic artery. They are pains. About the gonadal artery. This gonadal artery in the female sex we call ovarian artery. In the male sex we call testicular. testicular. For testicular artery, they should come down, go inside of the scrotum. Because inside of the scrotum, you can find their testes. <coughs> About the ovarian, this gonadal branch are coming down, this ovarian branch are coming down. 
coming down. Inside of the pelvic cavity, they are going to supply the left and right forward. Now, another single branch is visible here. We call median sacral. We call median sacral. It is single. It is going to arise from the abdominal aorta posteriorly, exactly upper, superior to bifurcation of the aorta. So from the posterior view, exactly superior to bifurcation of the aorta, we have a single branch that coming down to be able to enter to the pelvic cavity. What's the name of this artery? Median sacral now, look at here. If you notice here, you can find that each common area enter to the half of the pelvic cavity and anterior to the sacroiliac joint, anterior to sacroiliac joint, divide to two branches. External area, internal area. External area, internal area. External iliac is going to enter to the lower limb after passing posterior to inguinal ligament. After passing behind to inguinal ligament, the name change to the femoral artery. So femoral artery is continuation from the external iliac artery. Means if you imagine here we have the for example, the body, it is the lower limb. Now, if you imagine here is the inguinal ligament. Here we have the common iliac. Common iliac divides to internal iliac and external iliac. External iliac is coming to pass behind of the inguinal canal. The address change, the position change. It is going to enter to the lower limb. The name change to femoral artery. Here we call external iliac artery. So the femoral artery is continuation from femoral artery, continuation from external iliac. Now about the femoral vein, about the Femoral vein, medial to femoral artery, we have femoral vein. After passing the femoral vein, behind of the external, the name change to external iliac vein. The external iliac vein is medial to external iliac artery. Above the artery, we go far from the heart, above the vein, we go near the heart. We can explain that the external iliac vein is continuation of the femoral vein after passing behind of the inguinal ligament. But about the artery, we explain that the femoral artery is continuation of the external iliac after passing behind of the inguinal ligament. The external iliac, before changing to the femoral, has two branches. One of the branch laterally and one of the branch medially. This medial branch we call inferior epigos. And the lateral branch we call deep cell complex iliac. So the internal iliac, the external iliac, before leaving the uh, abdominal wall has two branches. One of the branch go laterally and one of the branch go medially. The medial branch we call the medial branch we call inferior epigastri and the lateral branch we call deep cell complex. Yeah. Okay. The remain the rest of the structure often remain for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, at one twenty.